Uh, g'day everyone, welcome to another uh, video podcast. Uh, today we're just going to do a review on a recently completed project. It's been, uh, well, probably over two years in the making and um, it's coming to an end and uh, it's operational and that's uh, all very exciting. And as you can see from the screen in front, uh, it's a large space. So just to recap on a few beliefs, um, at, at DRB Audiovisual we believe that the simpler you can make solutions, the better the utilisation is going to be on behalf of our users. And we believe that complexity uh, is the result of poor design or understanding of the user's needs. So, you know, these are a couple of key principles we work very hard on. Uh, this project uh, we're going to have a review on today, it's a large Melbourne uh, Catholic school and it's a recently completed uh, gymnasium or sports centre. It's uh, a multi-purpose venue as you can probably see here in the pictures and it's quite a large space. It's a double basketball stadium uh, and it has the ability to uh, function as a, a bit of a, a bit of a a uh, low scale uh, drama slash performance center. It can also function as a, a giant lecture theater uh, with I think circa 900 seat capacity. Um, it obviously caters to uh, all sorts of sporting events and uh, assembly needs. So um, this space came to our attention uh, probably a couple of years ago. I think uh, we were invited to assist with a solution uh, during the design phase, um, as a part of the um, as a part of the consulting team, um, working alongside a couple of uh, leading Melbourne consulting firms, architect and electrical consultant, and um, we met with their client. The client was initially looking at a projector based solution for the room, and uh, I think they were they were thinking multiple screens. And over the course of uh, roughly a year I suppose of design uh, back and forth with the client. This was pre the construction phase. Um, we settled on the solution that they that they have uh, here before you in this picture. Um, so to, to summarize back on you know some of the overarching principles of the requirement. One it was it was a multi-purpose space. It was to be very flexible. Two, uh, in line with our own beliefs, it was to be very simple to use, uh, such that they didn't need to always have technical crew on hand. Um, so, you know, there was a range of requirements, as I touched on the, in the beginning, um, you know, and, and even the seating that you can see in this picture here, which is a, a 900 seat retractable seating system. Uh, motorized is able to sit on the rear of the two basketball courts or as it's positioned in this current picture here, um, set sit on the forward half of the two basketball courts. So there was a range of different positions we needed to cater to um, and the sound system needed to work effectively uh, for any one of those scenarios um, and the video system needed to suit them as well. So uh, there was a very particular uh, attention paid to uh, the layout of the system and the layout of the control system and so forth. Um, to get a good video result, uh, we settled on a 200 inch uh, LED pixel uh, video screen that you can see here um, in the center of the photo. Uh, it was chosen for its um, suitability for the space because it is a basketball court and so on and so forth. Uh, I'm just glancing back, I think it was about a 3.9 mil pixel screen. Um, and uh, uh, the final design we settled on was a, a motorized winch system so that we could move the position of the screen to suit varying requirements uh, from a higher up location such as up here uh, to lower positions such as you see here and even lower uh, for service access as may be required. Um, we worked with uh, the architect and the electrical consultant to find suitable locations for equipment, and you know this this photo is taken during commissioning, so there is a little bit of um, a little bit of a mess still around. But the equipment rack is located over here, uh, and then there are various user input plates, including floor boxes, front of stage. Um, you know we have uh, mirror mirror ports for the main screen, so that if we if the client wants to bring in uh, you know, some smaller 75 inch panels at locations around the building to provide fill, uh, but these things are all possible. Um, the audio system, 
uh, comprises a, a, a community uh, speaker sound system uh, which was designed and engineered for the space uh, and uh, full impact resistant um, uh, speakers. You can actually see them on custom mount brackets suspended uh, from the ceiling here. And if I jump across to some other pictures, we'll give you some close-ups here. Uh, let's have a little bit of a look at the equipment rack. So again, this is during commissioning here, so there's a few uh, elements not quite in place when this photo was taken. Uh, but essentially, um, the system is comprised to work in two primary modes. Uh, one is what we would call simple mode and the other one we would call advanced mode. And effectively simple mode is where the user just walks in uh, and uses this touch screen only to activate the system and, um, and uh, you know, get it running the way they need it. So, and the way that's set up is, is it's, it's, it's programmed and designed around the use cases. So, whether that's half court, full court, video, no video, they're the primary mode selections in the beginning. Uh, and then the system is powered up, the screen is turned on, amplifiers, the levels are all uh, preset so that there's nothing there for users to play with. And you know, the, the, the simplified use case only makes use of um, the audio from the, the vision input, so that'd be HDMI or uh, the couple of wireless microphones which are linked to a, an active antenna system here, I think a couple of Sennheiser G4s, um, and uh, a range of, I think there's a couple of other inputs around the room for uh, physical microphone plug-in, but basically simple mode doesn't use a lot of audio sources, and they're all easily controlled by the touch screen here, and the levels are all preset as I said, and you know there is no mixing desk or anything for people to make a mess of or get confused with, and this is all very deliberate uh, for the simple mode uh, type of operation. Um, in this case here, uh, the client was uh, happy to use a Behringer X32, I think as it was, and this is really facilitating our advanced mode. So um, if when they activate the system, they choose advanced mode, now the audio processing is being done via the, the Behringer X32, and we're using, um, uh, Matrix DSPs in this case, I think they are the Extron DMP series product to basically route the audio signals between these two ecosystems uh, as needed. Um, and the Behringer X32 is uh, it, it gets it gets past feeds from things such as the wireless microphones and the vision audio related sources and all that sort of stuff. And then it can be patched to via various wall panels around the building, uh, which come back to these labelled panels here. Uh, for, for more elaborate advanced setups, but again, you know, that is to be used by the school's um, audiovisual specialists and not by day-to-day -day requirements. So even if the school has a requirement to do an address to 100 um, parents or 200 parents, uh, you know, then that can be facilitated easily without advanced setups and, and needing specialist staff on hand and, and all these sorts of things. And, th and these are the objectives. Uh, for the design, you know, right down to, um, you know, the microphones which will live in this cupboard here on a little shelf, sitting on charge docks, ready to go. Um, and, you know, uh, well, perhaps not obviously, but, you know, the, the control system, uh, you know, can be uh, mirrored, uh, you know, to an iPad. And so, you know, they're not restricted to operating from just here in the cupboard. So, uh, Probably not necessary to flip through some of these, but these are just uh, giving you a bit more of a look at the rack, winch controllers, video wall processors, so on and so forth. Um, <coughs> excuse me. And uh, here is just a still shot again during commissioning. Uh, you can see the uh, uh, the LED screen in the lowered position in this particular shot, and you can see some of our uh, community speakers located through the. Um, through the roof area there. The, the, the sound system was all ease modeled during the design phase and uh, is very deliberately configured into rows to cater for the different layouts and modes of the system. Excuse me here, I'm just looking for uh, some other information. Um, so yeah, configured deliberately into rows probably a little bit more visible in one of these rear photos. This is um, this is the back side of the seating, which is in the forward position. So this is the rear court, and you can see the rows here in the ceiling. Again, 
on these custom engineered brackets, uh, keeping the sound system up around the same level as the other infrastructure in the room, just from an aesthetics and uh, impact point of view. Although, as I said, these are all impact rated. Um, and you know, this is sort of row one, two, three, four, and the system is equalized and adjusted, um, and that's all pre-configured or configured during the commissioning phase. Um, you know, against those rows, and it relates back to the control system. So, you know, when the um, the users first select, you know, the positioning or the, the mode they're operating in, audio mode, non-audio mode, where the seating is, uh, the sound is configured accordingly. Um, what else have we got here? So, yeah, example, there's, there's multiple panels around the building, but these are examples of some of the panels that uh, relate back to uh, the the custom patch patch panels here in the rack and uh, a close-up of our screen and winch system uh, as it's engineered uh, with a loom behind it and so that's in the lowered position there these doors open to reveal like a room behind uh, which can be used in certain scenarios and uh, I've got a couple of videos here that we can play again this video is just recorded with an iPhone during the commissioning phase, but it gives you a sense of um, how the system performs and looks. Let's just spin up one of these. Uh, let's get this into a bigger view. Uh, sorry about this, just wrestling with the Resolution settings here. Oh, that's a bit annoying. Maybe I can get it to just play this way. Uh, sorry, I had a bit of a problem there with the video and trying to get this to play in a higher resolution. I did now. Let's go back. Okay, so that was one of the videos. Sorry about that little <coughs> interruption midway. Uh, this is oh, this is just a video recorded walking around the rear half of the court. Now that mo that that zone would normally be deactivated with the forward seating there. So this was again just testing purposes. You'll get a sense of the audio in the rear part of the court. So there you have it. Uh, sorry about the video moving around quite a lot in those shots. Um, uh, but that gives you a sense of the layout and the configuration of the space, uh, how it works. And certainly, you know, we can provide you with a lot more detail. Uh, and, uh, you know, the important thing about these projects is to start that detailed consultation um, nice and early so that um, you know there's lots of things about these sorts of projects that if if if, if we're involved too late we just can't uh, help influence the design and the outcomes enough and um, i think it comes at the expense of simplicity of operation of the system in the end so uh, if you've got a project you'd like some help with uh, something similar to this uh, in a school environment or indeed a, a similar commercial environment please don't hesitate to contact us. Uh, you can uh, call DIB AB in Melbourne and uh, 
you can contact us via email info at dlbaustralia.com.au. Thanks very much.